welcome to this episode of the Space for Magic podcast. Hey, I am your host, Patty Lennon, and today we are going to be talking about hope and we're going to be talking about inspiration. These are energies or qualities or aspects of being human um, that are necessary to have a magical life. So here we talk about how do you make space for magic, but in the very essence of wanting to do that must be hope, must be hope. Because if there's no hope, then there's nothing to reach for, right? Um, hope, and I'm, for you watching, I'm holding up the hope card in from the Space for Magic Oracle card deck. So in this card, there's a really a, an expression of what hope is, which is there's this small girl, innocence, standing in this darkness, looking at a tree, and she cannot see what's on the other side, but it's beautiful. It's beautiful. What she can see through the tree is light. That's the light of hope. That's the understanding that there is something better. And it's a matter of catching up to it, right? It's a matter of it revealing itself. It's a matter of certain things moving or shifting to reveal this um, other place. And when we're making space for magic, it is so that there is a bridge between where we are and where we most want to be. And that from where we are to where we most want to be, there's a gap. There's a gap. And we know our human selves cannot fill that gap. We cannot physically build the bridge from where we are to where we want to be. We can do part of it, but we can't get ourselves there by ourselves. It is magic. It is the divine force. It is the force of, you know, that that birthed our souls into the earth, onto the earth, that will then bring us the rest of the way. And that is why hope is not, not just necessary, but also a given, right? It's a given if we know there is this universal force of love that is always acting on our behalf. Something has happened, and I found this quite shocking and very telling and also true for myself just a couple of months ago, is that hope has started to feel like a risk. The people are almost like hoarding their hope, not meaning keeping it from others, but almost only giving hope to very few things, right? Like a squirrel with nuts. I'm only going to give hope where I'm pretty sure something good can come, right? Because hopes become risky. The leap of faith that hope requires feels like it could come back in my face. And really when hope feels risky, it's because disappointment has become toxic. It means that you have experienced so much disappointment and pain as a result of that disappointment, that your brain has equated disappointment to dangerous. The reality is being on this earth, disappointment's going to happen. Disappointment is going to happen. However, the amount of gifts in your life far ex exceed what has been disappointing. Now, maybe in the recent past, it doesn't feel like that's the truth, but it is. It is the truth, right? And we have so much in our lives that can reveal to us where there is opportunity for hope because of the proof of where we have accomplished, of what we've already accomplished, of what the magic that's already worked in our lives. But when that shadow of I cannot tolerate any more disappointment sort of falls on our life, we start just looking towards the things that aren't working. And the reason our brain does that is it just doesn't want us going after the experience of hope. It doesn't want us reaching for hope. And it's doing everything in its power to keep us from hope. And one thing you can do if you are experiencing this is to really start to notice where you are 
in your mindset. And a book, and I think I've mentioned it on the podcast at least once before, because I know it really struck me when I first read it. It's a book by Dan Sullivan. It's co-authored by um, Ben uh, Ben Hardy, I believe. This, um, and this is, there are not the only ones that have put this concept out. This has been put out by many, many thinkers, but because that's where it really anchored it for me, I'm mentioning it. And the book is The Gap or the Gain. And so you are operating in your life either from the gap or the game. The gap is you're where you are and you're looking forward and you're looking at all that needs to happen and how impossible it is, right? That's the gap. You're here where you want to be and there's this huge gap and all you see is this gap and and there's just nothing there that makes you believe that it's possible, right? Because your mind's kind of gone there. The gain, however, is to say, I'm here. But when I look back at where I've come from, I see how far I've come. I mean, people, we as a humanity got through a pandemic. We got through a pandemic, right? And then there's all your individual experiences. And so are you willing to look at where you used to be and how much brought you to where you are today? So that's number one. That is, are you able to operate in the gap or the gain? Or I should say, are you choosing to operate in the gap or are you choosing to operate in the gain? Because the gain, what you have already overcome, what you have already received, what you have already benefited from, all the gifts in your life are what can show you and sustain you in believing in hope again, in allowing yourself to hope. And hope is... is a quality that's very innocent. It's not positive visualization. It's not um, something that really requires the, what I would say, the adult mind. Hope is an innocent experience. It's saying, I don't know how I am reaching the light, how I am reaching my my, um, destination, but I believe it's possible. I believe it's possible because I believe in the divine. I believe in universe. I believe in source, whatever word you use, because there is magic in the world, right? And then inspiration becomes, it's necessary to believe in inspiration because inspiration is what's going to carry you on your path. Inspiration tells you what steps you need to uniquely take versus which ones the divine is going to take, inspired action. and. What I've noticed is people feel inspiration is fragile. So not so much that inspiration is risky because once we feel inspiration, it's there, right? It's not a risk. It's just there. But what's become um, problematic is that it's, will it stick? Will it be enough to carry me forward, right? Or will something change? Because that's what's happened for a lot of us is we've been taken on paths We thought we were heading in one direction and then we get there and it's a dead end, or at least it feels like a dead end. But really what's happened is we're still in the middle of the story. We've judged a point that we've reached as the end of the story when in fact it's actually the middle of the story. The story's not over yet, right? And so we need to continue to follow inspiration. And a friend said to me the other day, now this is, I would say this isn't even on my spectrum of woo friend. She is She's fairly woo, woo uh, skeptical, right? Um, she loves to listen to me talk to about it, but she doesn't really run her life on magic and the woo and all of this. And she said, "I'm finally coming out of the woods, and I'm ha- I really feel positive about this thing I'm working on." Now she has a business; she's an entrepreneur, and she's like, "This thing in my business," but I'm not even willing to say it out loud until I feel some momentum behind it. And what she's really saying is, I'm not willing to speak it because I'm almost afraid it will go away just by the energy I use to speak it. And if you're experiencing anything I'm sharing here in your own life, I just want you to know you're not alone. And on top of it, I just came through it. I'm on the other side of it. I, I know exactly what it feels like to feel like hope is risky. I know exactly what it feels like to feel like inspiration is fleeting. and um. It's unreliable and um, it's fragile, right? It feels fragile. It feels like you almost want to 
stay very quiet about anything that even feels remotely expansive because it might disappear, but it's not, it's not. We are all in the process of ascending the mountain. We are all in the process of evolving. And so there are certain structures that need to fall away as we evolve, as we vibrate higher. And that, and it's happening at a pace that has never happened before on this planet. I read somewhere and I can't attribute it properly. And I apologize for whoever put this out, but, um, that where what you would have needed five times of reincarnation, right? So this requires a belief in reincarnation to begin with what we've normally needed five lifetimes to learn. We are learning in years in this one lifetime. I mean, that is mind blowing the kind of evolution we're going, we're, we're facing fears. We're facing old karmic patterns. We're facing old wounds. We're throwing them off and, and it's happening at a pace never before seen on this planet because of this evolution of vibration. But you know what it feels like when you're in the middle of it, it feels like a crap show. It feels like a total and complete shit show. And that is scary. It's scary when it feels like you're doing all the right things and all you're experiencing is a shit show, right? So um, having gotten to the other side, and by the other side, let me just tell you what I mean is hope feels solid for me. Um, My faith has never been shaken, period. But now I believe this faith is going to, you know, that the divine is, is in fact working wonders in my life and that my desires are being met if they are for my highest and best good. And I do not need to question this, right? And I do not need to question whether I am enough in this process. And all I need to do is take the next step forward. So it's not that my life is turning magically perfect with all my desires being met instantly. Although that is in some circumstances that's happening very quickly. I notice that as soon as I get uh, solid with a desire, um, there are things shifting like instantly instantly. I'm talking like within minutes of having like a phone call, an email, like something show up in my reality that shows me like, yep, this is being taken care of. So that is going on. Um, but there's still lots to shift, right? The other thing that's, that's shift that has shifted for me is inspiration no longer feels fragile, right? Like I believe in the inspiration. I know that I may wake up tomorrow and not feel as on fire as I feel today, taking a step forward. And I can still take another step forward because I know it's going to keep coming back. I know that inspiration is not a constant experience, right? It doesn't always feel inspired, but once you get the inspiration, just taking the steps forward, then takes you on your path. And I've already started to see movement. And as we've been talking, um, I've been talking to my team about what we're going to be doing during Unleash Your Magic, my uh, upcoming virtual event, my two-day event. One of the things I really wanted to get to the heart of is what are the exercises we can do within two days that are really going to get people moving forward in a very expansive direction, truly unleashing your magic in the world. And as I've taken a step back, I've looked also at what are the pre-existing conditions that need to happen? What are the pre-existing conditions that need to happen in order us to feel safe to move forward, right? So both these conditions have to have to happen at the same time. Hope needs to feel safe. Inspiration needs to feel exciting and worthy, right? So I do want to go through the three things you can do right now to start to shift things for yourself. The first is um, to honor who you are right now and what you are feeling. That means allow in the truth of the disappointment you felt, allow in your anger, allow in your frustration, allow in your fear, receive it so that you can release it. But trying to like uh, segment and not look at and ignore and, and try and avoid what isn't working for you does not work. So allow it in Feel the bad feelings if that's what they are, because they are so less powerful than you think. And once you actually let them in, you're free of them. You really are free of them. It's the shadow and the fear of them that actually takes up so much more space. So that's number one. Number two is 
do take some actions to remove what is sucking you down or said another way, what is not lifting you up. So what is going on in your life? Is there, are there people you're talking to? Are there things you're eating or drinking? Um, is there a level of activity? Are there items in your home or your office that just suck you down, right? And where can you make some shifts? Where can you remove things? I'm not talking about you overhauling your life. I'm talking about if you're drinking out of a cracked mug every morning and it does not feel good to drink out of that cracked mug, then get rid of the cracked mug, right? I say that because actually I drink very often out of a mug that has a crack in it, but I adore the mug. My mother gave it to me when I moved into my first solo apartment. So that crack doesn't bother me. That crack doesn't bother me. But if you're not getting a new mug because, you know, it's frugal, let's say, let the mug go, right? If um, you are, this is my latest thing. I'm back to my coffee. I've realized that the coffee maker I have, this is this happened, I think, a year and a half ago. It's no longer what I want. And it would really be good if I had French press, a French press. That's what I love, right? So I'm getting, I'm going to move that other coffee maker onto someone who can enjoy it. And I am getting a French press coffee maker, okay? And so I'm just giving you these, these examples to say, this does not have to be hard or extreme. It's not about like, well, the person dra- dra- dragging me down is my my partner or my children and I can't get rid of them, right? That happens from time to time. Right. That's not, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about make those little movements. The make the little movements. Okay. Cl- any tiny, teeny tiny step you take to remove something that isn't working for you um, is going to help. Is going to help. It's going to start to create exponential benefits in your life. And then the final thing is choose one positive step forward. I can tell you, having talked to many, many people, People are not taking action on the steps they know they quote unquote should take. And by that, I mean, it's part of their inspired action because of the lack of hope. It feels pointless. It feels like, what's the point, right? Take the next step. And if you would like um, some fuel for this process, then I definitely encourage you to join us at Unleash Your Magic. During the Unleash Your Magic event, we are going to be taking your energy next level. If you feel like deep down inside of you, your magic is bubbling up, right? What I mean by that is your soul, your purpose, your the, your unique light is just bubbling up and it's dying to get out in the world and be making magic and, and drawing into yourself amazing, amazing benefits and desires as a result of sharing your magic with the world, right? And I mean by just being yourself, right? This is not about a job or a business or anything. This is just by being in the world in a very powerful and exciting way during a time where we are going through a powerful and exciting time. If that feels like you, then I would love for you to join us. Go to pattylennoncom forward slash unleash your magic. And um, we, I just want you to know we've got some, some beautiful energy coming up on the planet. This event is happening June 21st and 22nd because of the summer solstice, at least the, for those of us here in the Northern hemisphere, the summer solstice is the most powerful time to, uh, step into new beginnings to harness your own power, to feel the light within you and to feel all of this energy. So Get excited about this time that's coming up. It is powerful. It is good. It is blessed. And I promise you, the divine has your back. You are not alone. Your spirit team has you. In fact, one of the things we'll be doing at Unleash Your Magic is a, a process for you to meet your uh, spirit guides, your 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 round table of spirit guidance. So if that is something you're like, I wish I just knew what they wanted me to hear this is going to be the place for you to make it happen. All right, everyone. Have a beautiful, beautiful week and make space for magic.